talking college or pro football, the Bears are on a roll. Cal has won six straight and has been doing it in convincing style. Many are already looking ahead to the November 18th showdown with USC, but these Bears are taking it one victim at a time. The Washington Huskies need two more wins to accomplish a goal they set at the start of the season, becoming bowl eligible. Losing offensive leader Isaiah Stanback doesn't help, but these dogs are still hungry. Cal battles Washington next on FSN. Blue skies and another sunny day here on the California campus at Berkeley. But there is a wind here in Strawberry Canyon blowing from left to right. Could affect the ball game. It'll be another sellout crowd as the Washington Huskies make a house call today on Berkeley to do battle with the California Golden Bears on Kyocera College Football Saturday. And hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins. You know my partner, the P, Petros Papadakis. And uh, Bears have won six in a row, looking to make it seven in a row, and looking like the best team in this conference. They're a special team, Barry, and it's great to be here, as always, at the final beacon of peace, love, and hard-hitting defense here in Berkeley, California. I and, love it. And a little bit of offense as well. California, of course, they can run the football, they can throw the football, but today the guy who usually runs the football the most is hurting just a little bit. Marshawn Lynch is down but not out. He's going to play in this football game, but he's got two bad ankles. He hurt his ankle against Oregon, but he came back last week with 100-plus yards versus Washington State. We saw him in warm-ups. He's dancing around. He looks pretty good. He's going to play in this football game, and he's inside, outside. He uses his hands great. By far, the finest running back in the Pac-10. We're we'll also going to see Justin Forsett, who's very good at tailback for Cal. Deshaun Jackson, the wide receiver, can't say enough about this guy either. He is so explosive, by far the most electric player west of the Mississippi, and he's a guy that can take back a punt. He can beat you deep. He can catch a hitch and take it to the house. Very smooth wide receiver. Yeah, the number that jumps out at me with him, 18 touchdowns in 18 games. Not bad. <laughs> Let's talk about the Huskies. This is a better Washington Husky team that we've seen in the last few years. They won three games in a row, then they lost at SC, then they got whipped at home against Oregon State, so it needs to be a bounce back game, and P, they got to do it without their quarterback. They have to do it without Isaiah Stanback. He is out for the season, hurt his foot. It's also known as the old Jacques Lisfranc injury. That was Napoleon Surgeon, a very good surgeon, too. Basically, he's out for the year with a bad foot, and now Carl Bonnell is going to step in and start. Now, Carl Bonnell started two games back in 2004 for Keith Gilbertson. He can run around a little. They think he might be a more accurate passer than Standback, but Standback was this entire offense, so we're going to see a re really new face on the on the Washington Huskies today. It's going to be interesting to see how the Cal defense plays against Carl Bonnell, a brand new quarterback this season. Jacques did my knee, too. I never got back to Waterloo. <laughs> Listen, here come the California Golden Bears. This is a team that absolutely is brimming with confidence right now. And it gives us an opportunity before the opening kickoff here at Memorial Stadium to take it to the sidelines and meet the third member of our broadcast group. You know him, and of course you love him. <laughs> Jim Watson, why do you... You know, Barry, the beginning of the season, Cal's Damian Hughes was listed by some national publications as the number one defensive back in the country. And he's living up to the hype. Six interceptions, two of those taken back to the house for touchdowns. And, you know, he seems to play his best against the best. Recently shutting down Jason Williams of Oregon and Jason Hill at Washington State. Two great receivers have combined less than 100 yards. He's great against the run. He hits people like they owe him money. And his head coach, Jeff Tedford, says, I can't imagine a guy playing better at his position than Damian Hughes has. Recently, Barry, Damian Hughes was asked, who are the best receivers you've ever faced? No hesitation. He said it's easy. Marshawn Lynch and Deshaun Jackson. I have to cover those guys Monday through Friday. Yeah, and that's good for both parties, I think, don't you, Pete? Well, definitely the best teams have competition in practice, and that's one of the things that Cal really focuses on, especially on Tuesday and Wednesday. They hit in full pads, and a lot of teams like to do that, but the good teams really get after it and compete, and Jeff Tedford really focuses on that with the team. You've got to stay sharp all year, and the way you do that is hit in practice. And you see uh, the record of Jeff Tedford here. I think even more important than that, in 2002, California sold 17,000 season tickets. This year, 40,260 season tickets. He's changed the face and all the expectations of the program, and Ty Willingham is trying to do the same in Washington, trying to resurrect a once great program in Seattle. And Ty will get it done. 
They've already won more games this year than they had the last two years combined. I mean, Washington's already exceeded most people's expectations this season. They've exceeded mine, and they're playing great. So Bronstein will kick it off, and he's going to hit this one pretty good. There'll be no return by Marcus O'Keefe. And the Bears will start at the 20-yard line. Let's take a look at the lineups. They are brought to you by Kiyosara. First of all, four. The California Golden Bears will go on offense to begin things here. Nate Longshore, he has done everything and more that could be asked of him in this, his sophomore season. Justin Forsett will get the start ahead of Marshawn Lynch. As we said, Marshawn Lynch, we expect will play, but he's got a couple of gimpy ankles and outstanding receivers and a terrific offensive line. They've had nine different players start on the offensive line this year, and they haven't missed a beat. Longshore, the quarterback, slot right on the first snap of the ball game. Or set the tailback. Longshore going to go up on first down, and he has a man right in his grill. And that is Brandon Allah coming up from a defensive end spot. Now a late flag comes in. And they're going to call intentional grounding on Longshore. I don't know. I don't think that's the right call. They were running a movement play. Cal was, and they wanted to get Nate Longshore out and have an easy throw to start out. And I think Longshore wanted to get it to his man in the flat, which is going to be, I believe, his fullback, Byron Storer. But he just couldn't get it out there because Allah was right in his face. I don't like that call. I don't think he was trying to get rid of the ball. I think he was just trying to get the ball to the intended receiver, which was the fullback. So that'll cost him dearly. It's a loss of down, of course. And it'll back the Bears all the way up to their own eight-yard line. And every time Washington can slow Cal down, whether it be a penalty or a loss of yards, they got a good hit on the quarterback there with Allah, that's good because this is one of the most explosive offenses in the country this year. Let's take a look at the lineups for the Washington Huskies defensively, and they've done a nice job early in this ballgame. Defensive line, Teo Neshim with Mariaki, Afo, and Gunheim, although Allah got the start and made the first play. Dan Howe, outstanding linebacker, has already made a couple of big plays, and Scott White, the most consistent player on the Husky defense. Last time we saw the secondary of the Huskies against USC, they did an outstanding job. Very physical, but they took a step back versus Oregon State. A lot of people were saying USC hangover. Washington's played a lot of physical teams. Out of the gun this time. Longshore with all day to throw it. Now he steps up and throws it away. And very good defensive set on first on the first possession by the Washington Huskies. Great coverage right there. They did a good job. Now, you don't want to give Nate Longshore that long to throw the football. And if he has that long this entire day, he's going to make some plays. He's got great receivers, and he is the most efficient passer in the Pac-10. That in the style of Jeff Tedford's offense with the Aaron Rodgers and the Kyle Bowlers. We've seen Tedford foster into the professional league. But at the same time, Washington doing a great job and hitting hard on the first series. Andrew Larson now will have to punt into a very stiff wind. And Marlon Wood will stand right at midfield. So ostensibly, the Huskies should get a good field position here. Larson kicks an end-over-end kick that will take a California bounce and will get into Washington territory and finally go dead right at the 40-yard line. I thought he did a pretty nice job. Keep the ball low and get it on the ground, get it going in the right direction. 46 yards, not bad considering the win. Take a look at the Kiyosara lineups for the Washington Huskies offensively, and it's going to be Carl Bonnell out of Kent, Washington, who will be having his third career start. And as he told you earlier, Ty Willingham saying the first 10 minutes of this game, extremely important. He's got guys to throw it to. Sonny Shackelford, the running game, a couple of pluggers at the running back spot. And the offensive line, they've only played six people on the O-line all year long. So they must stay healthy there. They start Bunnell out of the gut. And they give it to James, and James will get about four. Defensively for the Cal Bears, and this is an outstanding defense. I mean, they have strength at every level of this defense. Brandon Meebane, of course, is an All-American defensive tackle, and he gets plenty of help from his friends. The linebackers are outstanding, and they're about seven deep. Williams, Bishop, and Pimentel get the start, but they're all good. Sidquan Thompson is coming off his best game. He was just a redshirt freshman, played great in the win last week. Bonnell straight back, five-man rush, clear off, passes good this time for the tight end Lewis. Lewis turns it into a big gain all the way down to the 35-yard line of the Bears. 
a nice play call by the Husky, slipping the tight end Lewis out over the middle. Von L showing great patience and dumping it off. Again, a nice, quick, easy throw. Something to get this guy going. Almost a very delayed screen there with the tight end delay, and Lewis knows what to do with the ball when he gets it down the field. And this Cal defense gets on him, but not quick enough. First down, Washington looking good right now. And a first down at the 18-yard line. Every Shackleford in motion on first down. Two tight ends in the game. They give this time to James. Not much to any. Picked up a couple to about the 16-yard line. Tackle made by Desmond Bishop, the middle backer. And we have seen teams move the football on this Cal defense, but this is the best defense in the Pac-10. And once teams get into the red zone, they have a very hard time punching it into the end zone. Cal had Washington State up there last week. They hadn't won up there since 1979 in Pullman, and they were able to really stop them inside the red zone. No touchdown. So the second down and eight at the 16-yard line. This time, James in motion. Out of the gun, Bonnell, four-man rush. Quick toss to Shackleford off his fingertips and almost intercepted by Sid Thompson. So now it'll be third down. I will say, Bonnell does look very poised, though. He looks relaxed, and they brought him in here for a reason. He's a Division One quarterback, and all these guys are itching for their opportunity. And been watching this long enough to know that you're one play away from getting into football game von l especially backing up a very active and athletic quarterback that runs around a lot and stand back he knew he might get a chance and now he's getting it third down and eight they're going to go empty in a bunch formation to the right side four receivers to the right side von l quick toss this time to james forget it slipped the tackle low and did get it going in the right direction but it'll be short of the first down vicky pimentel was the first man to it and that will bring about a field goal situation. Michael Bronstein, the field goal kicker, will hit this one at about the 23-yard line, 33-yard effort for Bronstein. Bonnell will hold it. Bronstein gets it on the way, and it is good so the huskies have gotten on the scoreboard first and that is significant and a real confidence builder i would have to think for the young quarterback carl bonnell 942 left first quarter well the huskies putting points up in their first possession 942 remaining first half the dodge scoring drive eight plays 44 yards took three minutes and 53 seconds 33-yard field goal by Bronstein puts the points on the board for the dogs. Bronstein will kick it away. Marcus O'Keefe will be the deep man. They will not have Marshawn Lynch back on kickoffs as they sometimes do. That is the Bears. Damien Hughes is the short man. Bronstein's kick with the wind at his back, and O'Keefe will not try this one either. About four yards deep. Empty backfield. Double slot, Longshore in trouble, has to step aside. Now he buys time, throws, almost intercepted. Deshaun Goldson was right there. And again, the Bears struggling offensively. Yeah, it was a nice play by Longshore just to elude the rush of Brandon Allah, showing a lot better feet than he had when he showed up here at Cal Berkeley. But trying to force that ball into Hawkins and Goltz in a very good corner. Doesn't even start for this Washington team getting in there and batting the ball down. Washington has been great on third down in this football game. Came up big the last time we saw him down at USC also. So Larson to punt it away. He'll be kicking to Marlon Wood. Wood could scoot. Hits this one pretty good. Into the win. He turns it over. Drives Wood back to the 16-yard line. Wood starts back, slips a tackle, gets the 20 to the 22, where he is surrounded and down. First man to him was Bernard Hicks. Well, that brings us to our Aflac trivia question. Aflac! Now, we have not read this yet, so we'll guess along with you. Who were the starting quarterback and head coach when Cal won its last conference title in 1958? I can tell you the starting quarterback. You could, really? I couldn't tell you the head coach. 1958, I gotta think about that. I did the kick worm a few times. Like the, like the original Lewis I was Rankin. good at it. I was good at the kick worm. Except 
I punctured my stomach with my belt buckle once. I never did it again. I hate when that happens. <laughs> with that, we come to the end of the first quarter, and the Huskies doing exactly what Ty Willingham wanted to do, take the air out of the ball, keep the Bears' offense off the field, and play a hell of a defense. And that's what he's doing. His team leads it 3-0. We're coming back. We welcome you back. We start the second period. Washington leading it three to nothing. And Carl Bonnell in his first start, four for five, 35 yards. He's run the ball a couple of times for 24 yards to give his team a couple more first downs. And more importantly, keep the Bears off the field. So Washington just doing everything right so far. The guy starting his first game is having a better game than the most efficient passer in the Pac-10, Nate Longstreet, so far. Bonnell, play fake. Rolls to his right, buys time. Now he throws, got a man, wide open Russo. Russo at the Bears 40, down to the 35-yard line. Zach Follett on the tackle, but a wide open Anthony Russo. And Carl Bonnell is getting excited. You can see him. He's starting to play with a swagger. He's jumping around. He's looking to the sideline. He's drawing excitement and enthusiasm from his teammates on the sideline. You see Russo coming all the way across the field. Has to wait a little bit for the ball, but the ball gets there in a hurry. And Bonnell just doing a great job running this football team and wonderful play calling by Washington, getting this guy out in the open and finding him some confidence. A pick up a 32. Again, they go without a huddle. Bonnell goes downfield, got a man. Russo wide open, makes the catch. Touchdown, Washington. Saquon Thompson, the young corner, redshirt freshman, getting beat, but there is a flag down on the field, and the officials are motioning everybody back. Wow, what a pick-me-up that would have been for the Huskies no going into halftime with a touchdown. Bonnell throwing it to the right side this time, not to the side where Damian Hughes was, picking on the freshman, and it worked out. Let's see what the penalty is. Appears to be against Washington. They're coming back. Officials huddling at the 30-yard line. Now we'll find out. No, no flag. Play. The Cal player got off the field. Touchdown. The play. Touchdown is good. How about that? That's a huge play. And it's out of the hurry up. You don't often see new quarterbacks with a lot of success in the hurry up, and it's number five on number five, and the Husky five, Anthony Russo, wins that. 185 pound junior out of Lakewood, Washington, second leading receiver on the team, and having a good year. That might have been the biggest play of the year for him so far. No question. Try for point is up, and it is good, and with 47 ticks remaining to be played here in the first half, the Huskies lead the Bears 10 to nothing. We welcome you back. They've made that a 49-yard play officially on the pass from Bonnell to Russo. A couple of big plays in successive weeks for Russo. He had a 56-yard catch for a score against Oregon State last week. None bigger than this one, though. You just have to wonder, where's the Cal offense? Washington's offense finally waking up, getting the ball downfield, doing a great job. Cal's offense, nowhere to be found. They're not going to give O'Keefe a chance on this kickoff, but they are going to leave the Bears some time. 41 seconds at the 42-yard line. Kyle Kirst was the guy who received the kick for Cal. And let's see how the Bears play this. Well, Sidquan Thompson waving for some safety help and looking over and wondering where his safety is, but really just letting Anthony Russo run right by him. Now, there might have been some kind of miscommunication between Sidquan and his safeties, but wow, I mean, just a bad breakdown in the two-minute offense by the Cal defense, and Washington really taking advantage, and you see the excitement of Carl Bonnell back on top here going into the uh, tunnel. Bears not in any hurry here. They let a lot of time tick off. There's Jackson with a catch. Jackson at the 31-yard line. He did get out of bounds. Well, they're going to say he did. 19 seconds remaining, and the clock will keep ticking as soon as they get the chain set. Bears right over the ball, ready to go. Longshore again. Steps up, throws to the sideline. Jordan makes the catch, steps out of bounds to 28 with 11 seconds left. And now you're starting to see a little bit of a sense of urgency with only 11 seconds left in the half. 
from Nate Longshore. These are the pinpoint passes that we've seen all year from the young quarterback. And finally, he's starting to look the part, maybe a little too late. Hopefully for the Bears, they're going to get a field goal here, feeling a little bit better going into the tunnel because they didn't have a lot to look forward to. They were going to get yelled at pretty good. they got to get that offense going a little bit because this is a good offense. We just haven't seen it. Well, they got a couple of shots at the end zone here. If they can, if they can take it or two shots to get to the end zone without throwing the ball into the end zone. Longshore straight back. Now he throws over the middle. He's got a man. Hawkins at the four-yard line. Five seconds remaining. They got to get a timeout call, and they do. Now they got five seconds. You might have a shot at the end zone here. Well, what do you do in five seconds? I mean, you can take one shot at the end zone, but you're not really sure whether or not you're going to have time to get your field goal unit onto the football field. I mean, you can call a timeout, or it's an incomplete pass, and the clock stops, but does your shot at the end zone take five seconds? I think you can do it in five seconds. And I think, but what do I know? I think that's what Jeff Tedford <laughs> will do. I think he'll take a shot at the end zone. Well, where has it all been for uh, 29 minutes and 10 seconds? Well, it's funny. Sometimes that tempo and that sense of urgency where we got to get a score, this is our last chance before we get yelled at at halftime, really does change players. And it definitely seems to have changed Longshore in this football game. Two beautiful throws getting the ball downfield to Jackson and then to Hawkins. Now, the Bears still have another timeout to use here. In fact, they have two timeouts, but so I think it's a virtual certainty that they will take a shot at the end zone here. And of course, I would be wrong. <laughs> they got their kicking unit on the football field. So Tom Schneider is going to kick it. I told you I don't know. Virtual certainty. Yeah. Well, I used the Sounded word. good. I said virtual. <laughs> So Schneider, a 22-yard field goal, trying to put the Bears on the board with five seconds remaining. And he drives it, and it is good. And so the Bears get three, and there's still two ticks left. It'll be interesting to talk to Jeff Tedford if there was any uh, thought at all, which I suspect there was not, <laughs> of going for it. So the Bears get on the board, but not in nearly as dramatic a fashion as the Washington Huskies got on with that 49-yard touchdown pass from Bonnell to Russo, the only touchdown of the first half, something I never thought I would say in a California football game, particularly here at Memorial Stadium in Berkeley. So the Bears trailing the Huskies 10-3. to Ty Willingham has to be very happy with his team. And right now, let's go to Jimmy Watson down in the field. Waddy? Tyrone, I talked to you right before kickoff. You told me Carl Bonnell was ready to go. He certainly looked comfortable. Well, I, I, I was pleased with the start that Carl gave us. Uh, he seemed to be pretty flawless in most of the things that he did in terms of executing our system, and he should get stronger from that point. As I think you can see with his throw at the end of the half. Let's talk about the defense. Fantastic first half. Nobody has been able to slow California down. How did you do it? Well, I think it's more California than anything else. I think what we've got to be ready for is the awakening, as I call it. We've got to go in at the halftime, and we've got to come back out. We've got to get some juice, and we've got to get some energy because they're going to bring some energy, and if we can continue to play smart, Okay, and not have any of our kind of nicks and bumps and bruises affect us in terms of our personnel, then we got a chance to be in good shape. As always, thanks for your time. You're welcome. All right, Tyrone Willingham, he's ready to go. Barry, he's warning us about the awakening. Well, and you can see they at least stirred at the end of the first half over the final 54 seconds. I can't imagine Cal can be held without a touchdown. I couldn't think so for 30 minutes, let alone 60. Let's go to our college football Saturday studio with Mike Goldberg. start the second half 10 to 3 ball game Washington leading the 10th ranked California Golden Bears Barry Tompkins that guy right there is Petros Papadakis Jimmy Watson's down there roaming the sidelines and they talked about the awakening Ty Willingham talked about the awakening of the California Bears 60,000 people here at Memorial Stadium are saying will there be an awakening I thought Kate Choppin wrote the awakening 
It's a good book, but yeah, I'm not sure what's going to happen with Washington. They've played great on defense. We expected a physical and hard-hitting football game, but Washington has come out and really stifled this entire Cal offense, and they have not moved the ball well, just not until that very last drive when Nate Longshore had a couple long completions, got him the field goal. You see Cal's not running the ball well. They're not throwing the ball well. They haven't turned it over. Washington's turned it over twice, but the Huskies still have the lead in this football game, and they are playing very, very well, especially considering that they have a brand-new quarterback in Carl Bonnell out there doing a great job leading this football team despite the two interceptions. But you can't hold Cal down for that long, Barry. I just don't think you can. California going to kick it away to start the second half to the Washington Huskies. Important first series, I think. Tie end over end kick, and they're going to come out with this one. And Lewis is going to get it out to about the 17 yard line, so probably an ill advised kick return. Carl Bonnell in the first half was uh, as good as I'm sure anyone could have expected. There's been a lot of noise about maybe taking a look at the freshman and bringing, on, bringing him off his uh, off his uh, redshirt season, that being Jackie Locker, but that is not going to happen if Carl Bonnell continues to play the way he has. Bonnell out playing Nate Longshore in that half. Here's a give to Rankin on first down. Remember, James went out with a bad ankle, so the running task will be taken over, I would expect, entirely by Lewis Rankin. And obviously Cal can make a great defensive statement here by forcing Washington to go three and out and getting that offense back on the field after I'm sure they got a real tongue lashing from the coaching staff at halftime. This is a very big third down for both teams. Third down and nine, Huskies three of seven, third down conversion. Bonnell, four man rush over the middle, Constant makes the catch. And he'll be close to the first down. A curtain, I beg your pardon, made the catch. And not sure if he's going to get enough for the first down. It's going to be close. Mickey Pimentel made the stop. Going to be very close. Close enough to measure. He might be a little short. That's a tight end route that has worked for Washington with Robert Lewis and now to Johnny Curtin just sneaking the tight end over the middle after really clearing out that area. And Vanellas completed it well. Johnny Curtin again. Just a sophomore, but a big sophomore, 6'3", 280 pounds, and once he gets going forward, it's hard. And this is a tough situation right now for Washington. You don't want to give Deshaun Jackson the ball. There's wind blowing. That ball's going to be unpredictable. They better get their coverage down the field. High snap, Douglas pulls it down. It's a line drive. This is returnable, but Jackson lets it bounce, and it will bounce backward and be down by Lewis at about the 37-yard line. That was a line drive kick. It was a little deeper. It could have been real trouble for Washington. Ten to three Huskies. Bears will have it for the first time in the second half. Well, the Bears with their first possession of the second half. Two tight ends are going to go unbalanced here. Long short. Give it a Lynch. Look out. 40, 45, midfield, down to the 47-yard line. Nesfin Forrester made what might have been a saving tackle for the Washington Huskies. A pickup of 16. And it seems like midway through the second quarter, Cal started to find some room on the perimeter versus this Washington defense. That time, just a very simple stretch play. Marshawn Lynch knows what to do when he sees open areas, gets there in a hurry, and takes the ball upfield. That's what makes him so good. And you know, no one uses their hands better than Marshawn Lynch when there's tacklers around. Great straight armor is Marshawn Lynch. Really gives a lot of people the old highs. This time he splits to the far side. Long shore, straight back, pump fake, and the throw for Lynch. He's got him at the 25-yard line. First down, Bears at the 20. Forrester again defensive, but Longshore getting in gear now. Yeah, he really is. He started out the game just 2 of 9 for 23 yards. With that pass now, he's 7 of 8 and looking very strong. A pump fake, and that was to Lynch all the way. Lynch with the stop route, and then just turning and taking it downfield. You can see him. <laughs> very nice play. You don't expect that kind of thing from a running back very often. But Marshawn Lynch is one of those players that can do it all. And a nice play from Cal. They're marching down the field right now. Look out. First down, just short of the 20-yard line. Jordan comes in motion. And he 
give it to Lynch again. Lynch gets by the first wave and is stopped as it gets close to 15 yard line. That gave him progress to about the 16. It'll be a gain of five. Teo Neshim with help from Chris Hemphill on the tackle. We go to the sidelines and Jimmy Watson. Lonnie. All Marshawn all the time. You know, he draws a lot of attention to himself on the field, but he avoids the spotlight off of the field. Last year he won the MVP trophy at the Vegas Bowl, and the Cal Media guys had to beg him to come out and talk to reporters. Last year a national magazine came to Berkeley to do a feature on him, and Lynch panicked, so he called his cousin, the wide receiver Robert Jordan, to sub for him. Jordan had to sit right there while Lynch was hiding underneath his hood and tell the reporter all about his cousin. Pretty refreshing, Barry, considering uh, you got that human jukebox sitting next to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you know, the other thing that's interesting, Waddy, along those lines, I'll tell you right after this. Here's Lynch gonna throw it. Now he decides not to, pulls it down, stays on his feet. Now he's coming back the other way, look out. He could get there. He's at the 10, cuts it back at the five, drives toward the end zone, stopped at the one yard line. What a play. <laughs> what an amazing play by Marshawn Lynch. You might say that he should have kept going, but he doesn't have great confidence. The guy is working on two bad ankles, and he's a little slow to get up, but he looks okay taking it all the way across the field. About a 60-yard run. I'm not sure how far he got. And originally, he was going to try to throw the football, but now you're starting to see Marshawn Lynch with that confidence, stepping through the defense and just doing a fantastic job. This guy's just too hard to tackle. People seem to slip off him, and he's elusive. He's the whole package, Barry. You know, and the other thing, Waddy, what you were saying, he never takes his helmet off. He wants to be incognito at all times. Jeff Tedford told us you'll never see him without his helmet. Here's Forsett. He's going to be stopped short. Lynch now 10 carries, 86 yards. Not bad for a guy with two bad wheels that no. was maybe not even going to play in this football game. And Barry, we saw him run out the tunnel right when the game began. And he had a hitch in his giddy up. I mean, he did not look very strong and he was testing that ankle and he was moving very gingerly around. But now as the game has gone on and we see him here in this third quarter, great confidence stepping through that defense like, like Godzilla stepping through Tokyo, just <laughs> knocking people over. Second down now and goal. For set again, touchdown. Well, that was a no-nonsense drive by the Bears. Great block up front by Andrew Cameron, and Forsett just stepped into the end zone. And they just did a great job attacking the perimeter, getting the ball to their best playmaker in Marshawn Lynch. And you know, I like this back, Justin Forsett. He's going to attack the line of scrimmage every time he gets the football. Now, he hasn't had great production today, but that time filling in for a very tired Marshawn Lynch. He ran all the way across the field and scored a touchdown. Try for point is up and good, and just like that, we're tied at 10. 10 minutes, 31 seconds, and that wake-up call that California has been waiting for, apparently, has come. We're tied. Well, the Bears, for the first time, are tied in this ball game. They're tied at 10. 10.31 remaining. Excellent drive. Here's a look at the Dodge scoring drive. Seven plays, 62 yards. It took only three minutes. And along the line, Marshawn Lynch, three rushes for 38 yards. Forsett takes it in for the touchdown, and it's a 10-10 ball game. Very effective drive. So the Bears will be kicking to Wood. And I doubt this will be returned. It is really driven. About eight yards deep in the end zone. Take another look at that run by Marshawn Lynch. He makes people miss, doesn't he? Well, they're going to try to have him throw the football. He comes out there to throw it, and you see there's five or six Washington Huskies in the area, and none of them can get to him. He's putting moves on everybody, and here he is, and you're going to see two Huskies there, three, four, five Huskies in the area, and it takes that many to pull him down. And the sixth guy shows up and makes yeah. the tackle. That's right. Every single Washington defender had a shot at Marshawn Lynch at that play. This is a statement drive now for Washington. We saw them versus USC, and I guess last week versus Oregon State, everybody's calling an anomaly. We saw this team show up great in the Coliseum versus USC, and they played hard, and every time USC scored, they came back and answered with a touchdown, but that was with Isaiah Stanback at quarterback. Here's Carl Bonnell's chick. And Kenny James part of the time at running back. Rankin has struggled. Here's a flea flicker, Bonnell. Looking for Shackelford. Got it. Makes the catch at the 40, 35-yard line. What a throw by Bonnell. 
beautiful throw, and he led his best receiver, Sonny Shackelford. The biggest deal on that play, Sonny Shackelford versus Damian Hughes. Bonnell not afraid to throw the ball versus Damian Hughes. 46 yards down the football field, rank and turning, and believe me, it's hard to take that extra step when you're the running back trying to flip it back on the flea picker. He does so, gets the ball to Bonnell, and Bonnell not hesitating, throwing a beautiful ball. They said he was an accurate passer. Hughes was there, but beautiful throw and a great catch by Sonny Shackelford. What a play by the Huskies offense to answer. Robert Peel was right in the face of Bonnell. Here's a drop by the rank and nothing to do it. Rankin has just not been able to do much business. So really, the Huskies are making do with almost the total absence of a running game. Let's go to the sidelines, Jim Watson, buddy. Barry, I was standing in the end zone right behind Carl Bonnell when he threw that ball. He never saw it. Desmond Bishop left his feet and drilled Bonnell. He came up last, looked over at the sideline, and had to ask three or four guys, what happened? <laughs> That's that look right there that Waddy was talking about. So now it's third and ten. Atron means way 280. Remember That's him? right, I do. Northeast Louisiana, Northwest Louisiana. One of those directional schools. Straight back goes Bonnell. He's got time. He throws. Intercepted. Picked off this time by Pia. Pia gets back to the 20. Slips a man and goes down at the 22 yard line. Third interception that time. Thrown by Bonnell. Anthony Russo made the tackle. Threw that one a little bit tall. Well, after the beautiful throw to Sonny Shackelford, we're seeing a guy who's just not that consistent yet because he hasn't played a lot. Bonnell feeling confident and really slinging that one downfield, trying to get his guy Cody Ellis, but right into the arms. Easy pick for Robert Peel, who takes it back for the Bears. And you know what? You could say it's Carl Bonnell making bad throws, but also this is a Cal defense that's great at forcing turnovers, and that's what makes them the best defense in the Pac-10, and they give that offense another opportunity. And that's just the mark of a Jeff Tedford football team, a guy that's changed the entire culture of this football program. He's changed everybody's attitude. He's changed everybody in this entire area, the way they look at Cal football. They're efficient on offense, and they force turnovers on defense. That's how you win. Hawkins now goes to far side. Blitz comes, and a quick toss to Jackson, and he couldn't hang on. And Jackson could have gone a mile that time had he been able to break the first tackle of Jason Wells, but started thinking about where he was going before he thought about catching. And that's the kind of thing where everybody in the whole stadium gasps. They see that ball and they see the space and well, feel like and I can take them out. And coming with a blitz from that side, too. And this Cal offense really has players like Lynch and Jackson where people are scared to go get a hot dog. You know, they're scared to that's leave right. during the game because something explosive can happen on any play. Long short, short drop, throws. The catch is made this time by Hawkins and lost the football, picked up though by the tight end, Stevens, and Stevens advances into the 40-yard line. Well, a fortuitous break for the Bears. Craig Stevens, 6'5", 254 pounds, really bailing out Lavelle Hawkins. Nice throw by Nate Longshore. And Stevens, they say they're scared to take this guy off the field. He's a great blocker and an all-around tight end. And he's from my favorite place in the world, San Pedro, California. God bless him. He's Went to your old high school. Insula High, the Mighty Panthers. And he is a solid football player for the Bears. 25 yards on that play for the Cal offense, but a little bit of luck there. Yeah, Donald Butler actually got the ball out of the hands of Hawkins, and Stevens was right there. So the Bears have it at the 40-yard line. They bring Storer to the near side. Long short, straight back. Now he has to step up. Throws over the middle. Diving catch by Stevens. Great grab. Well, you just talked about it. He just talked about Craig Stevens and what a special tight end he is. And Cal really missed him on the first kick of the Tennessee game. And that one loss that Cal has, Craig Stevens, who they say is their toughest and strongest player, was knocked out on the kickoff. And it took him a little while to get back, but now he looks like he's back in his midseason form, diving and making plays, but they also need him on the line of scrimmage. Just a great blocker. I was a little disappointed, though, to hear that he joined a fraternity, Barry. You I know, know you said that. I just like the guys that stay on the football team. He joined a frat. You know, from my high school. Why does he hang out with the frat guys in the college shirt? Hang out with the guys in the squad. Third and three, four sets, not going to get there. And now it's going to be fourth down at the 32. They have a kicker that does have plenty of leg, although they have given no indication that they are uh, going to kick it. Now they do. They will bring on the field goal team. Kicking with the win, Scott White turned for a setback that time. And Schneider will come on to try a field goal. 
Nate Longshore was trying to wave off the kicker like he's a pitcher or something. Yeah. <laughs> but the kicker didn't stop coming. You're not going to shake off Jeff Tedford. <laughs> it's a long one. It's going to be a 50-yarder. And again, remember, the wind is kind of blowing across the field, actually, not really at the back of Schneider, but he will get some help. Schneider hits this one pretty good. If it's accurate, it's good. It is 50-yard field goal to give California the lead. And even though Washington's playing tough defense without the face mask penalty, you had to figure that Cal was going in to score a touchdown. Their offense has got it going now. Schneider with a lot of leg gives the Bears a lead for the first time, 13 to 10. We're coming back. Bears lead it for the first time, 13 to 10. Barry Tompkins, Petros Papadakis, Jimmy Watson on the sideline, 441 left, third quarter. The Dodge scoring drive, eight plays, 46 yards, took three minutes and 27 seconds, and a 50-yard field goal. The Bears now 13 unanswered points, and starting to get on a roll. You just weren't going to be able to stifle them all day offensively. They have too many guys. High end of a red kick, and that's going to be driven to the back of the end zone. There'll be no return by Wood. So Bonnell with another chance. Remember, his team trails by only three points. And it gave us to Rankin, and Rankin this time gets a little room. Rankin at the 25, trying to get the outside. He does it to 30, out of bounds to the 35-yard line. Best run of the day by far by Lewis Rankin. And he hasn't had great numbers on the day, but again, we're talking about Lewis Rankin. He's had some big 100-yard games this football season. He's used to being in the open field. The key to Lewis Rankin, we were talking about it in the first half, is getting some momentum. And you see there, he gets his legs going, gets some momentum, and finds a way to get to the outside. And the longer he runs, the faster he gets. Got 15 on that one, and the first down at the 35-yard line. Remember, this is only a three-point game. 14 seconds remaining here in the third period. I think this is going to go against Washington. Looked like Michael Gottlieb for the second time came out of his stance a little early. Well, now the Huskies saying that it's against New Tafizi of California. We'll see. And it is. So Gottlieb was drawn out of his stance. And Newton Tafisi is a guy that brings a lot of energy off the edge for Cal. Cal's really starting to try to get the edge. You see Follett creeping up. Tafisi creeping up. They were really going to attack the edges on that play. And Washington was lucky that they were able to get five yards out of that. Cal starting to bring people. Short of the 40-yard line. Now first and five. Bonnell straight back. Screen for Ellis. And Desmond Bishop will have none of it. Lost a yard. Desmond Bishop plays that screen about as well as I've seen a college linebacker play. Read it beautifully, crept in behind the blockers, and made the play. Juan Garcia just ran right by the center who was out there to block the screen, but Desi Bishop sniffed it out. He's a good backer. And that's the last play of the third quarter. Look at the scoreboard. Shows the Cal Bears 13. Huskies hanging in there, 10. We start the final period. 13 to 10, the Bears lead the stubborn Washington Huskies, who have almost as much offensive yard output as the Bears do. Bonnell out of the gun. Now he's got to roll out of there. And he's got some room if he wants to run, and he does. 35, 40, 45, first down. He's fast. Yeah, he gets out of there. He gets out of there good, but four interceptions on the day for Carl Bonnell is not going to get it done. And that's only because of his inexperience. I think the kid has shown poise. I think he's done a good job. He hasn't had happy feet. He's run when he's had to, but just a few bad throws, and he's put his team kind of behind the eight ball here in the second half, but still only a three-point game. And he's still out there playing, doing a great job. Well, and his team very much in it, just short of midfield with a first down. Just underway, final quarter. Russo this time to the near side, Shackle put to the far side. Give us to Rankin again, and Rankin bounces it outside, now cuts it back, takes it to the outside, he's got room. He's got one man to beat at the 25. Cuts it inside, gets around Hughes, and has finally corralled it down inside the 10-yard line at the 6-yard line. Did I say that he never run a game? 
<laughs> they got a running game with that run. Lewis Rankin coming to life on this possession for the Huskies. I told you, this is a guy that can have 100 yards game. He's a guy that can get it going down the field. He just needs a little momentum. And you see him stops his feet, but only very quickly finds a hole and really starts expressing himself into the teeth of that Cal defense. And look at the confidence he's running with. Takes a few bears to take him down. What a nice run. Almost as good as the Marshawn Lynch run in the last possession. Beautiful run by Lewis. Big time run, 42 yards. First down and goal at the seven yard line. Trips left, here comes a blitz. Bonnell on a quarterback sneak. He's gonna take it in. Washington touchdown. Just a little quarterback draw. Seven yards. And Carl Bonnell bringing his team back with a great run by Lewis Rankin and another nice run by Carl Bonnell. This Washington team, I tell you what, the best way to describe them is they are not afraid. They're not afraid to go play places. They're not afraid who they're playing in the Pac-10. Very nice move. This Bonnell's got great feet and escapability. What a great drive. Huskies have taken the lead. Try for point is up, and it is good, and it is a 17 to 13 lead for the Washington Huskies over the 10th ranked California Golden Bears. Just underway, fourth quarter. Bears got to play catch up all over again. Well, the Huskies are not only hanging around, they're doing more than that. They have taken the lead from the California Golden Bears. They lead it by 4-17 to 13, a drive all on the ground. Rankin started, remember, at 14 carries for 17 yards. Since then, his last two have accounted for 65 yards. And then, of course, Bunnell takes it in for the touchdown on a perfectly executed quarterback draw play. So the Bears, again, look it up at the dogs. Kickoff was going to drive Damian News way deep into the end zone. He'll have no chance. And remember, the Huskies had a stop on Cal's last possession on fourth down at the seven yard line. There's Longshore throwing, and a catch made by Hawkins, and a first down for the Bears close to the 45 yard line. Just pitch and catch. Well, what was a very tight and non offensive ball game seemingly in the first half might become one of those old fashioned fourth quarter Pac 10 shootouts here in Strawberry Canyon. There you see Hawkins, recognizes zone, turns, shows Longshore his numbers, and Longshore is able to get the ball right there on the crook of the seven. Longshore is looking very accurate here in the second half. That's four out of the gun, Lynch. Malone set back. Longshore steps up, throws, got Stevens. First down and more at the 20, down to the 16-yard line. Scott White makes the stop, and that was a perfect pass by Longshore. Well, Scott White is the best playmaker and the leader of the defense for Washington. Already graduated, and he's a good player. He's been there for a long time, but he's not going to be able to run with Craig Stevens, who's a very good tight end. Two big catches in this game for Stevens. We mentioned out of San Pedro, California, Whoa, the home Pedro. of my partner. <laughs> and a Peninsula High Panther. The angry Panther. <laughs> Having a tough year, but they'll be back. There's a give to Lynch. Lynch bouncing it off the first tackler and gets down about the 12 yard line. He picked up about five, maybe six yards on the play, and there wasn't much there. Butler and Wallace make the tackle. And now it's third down and five. Two for 10 on third down is the Bears today. Not their usual production. Longshore has to roll away. Now he throws, and he throws it away, and it's fourth down. If you can flush Longshore out of the pocket, you got a chance. Yeah, he's not going to be able to produce very much on the run, and that is the one great weakness in Nate Longshore's game and what kind of takes Cal out of that spread aspect of their offense. But, I mean, what can you say about this Husky defense and the way they're battling in this football game? They've given up some big plays. This crowd gets excited, and then they come right back and make some big plays. You saw the big hit. I mean, these guys are just playing great, and there's no give up in that. No, there's not. You know, and it does make last week against Oregon State look like an aberration. 29-yard field goal try for Schneider. He's already made one from 50. This one is on its way, and it is good. And so the Bears get within one, but again, a good hold defensively for the Huskies, and Ty Willingham has to be very happy with his defense as once again, they hold the Bears to three in the red zone. That's a view from here at Memorial Stadium in Strawberry Canyon in Berkeley, California. And uh, 
the city of San Francisco, the Bay Bridge. Take a look at the shot delivered to Longshore after he threw the ball. Made Longshore running around on third down, and you're going to see C.J. Wallace, a strong safety for UW, come in with the helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. Now, there's two ways to look at that. If you're a Cal fan, and we're going to hear it right now, I mean, if you're a Cal fan, you're saying helmet-to-helmet, -helmet, throw the flag, that's a personal foul. But if you're a UW fan and they didn't call it, you're saying our defense doesn't care. I mean, they're playing reckless football right now, and they're flying up and down the field. They're not intimidated by the explosiveness of the Cal offense, and they're just doing a great job. But helmet-to-helmet's no good. Marlon Wood straight ahead on the kick return, gets it back to about the 24-yard line. Well, the crowd rooting on the California defense, but the Huskies with the ball and the lead coming down toward the 10-minute mark. Pump fake this time by now. Throws it, and it's almost intercepted. Damian Hughes had a read on the ball and just couldn't come up with it. Miscommunication between Sonny Shackelford and Carl Bonnell. You know, the only time they were able to get Damian Hughes in this football game was on the flea flicker. Maybe he was peeking in the backfield. But, again, I just wouldn't mess with Damian Hughes. I just wouldn't throw it over there. He knows exactly what he's doing. This is guy with seven picks this year. He's got supreme confidence, and every time he guesses, he's guessing right. That's right. Third down and a little over a yard. Huskies four of ten in third downs. They give it a rank, and he stopped in the backfield. Never got started. No chance. And the dogs will have to give it up. I told you they'd be shooting those gaps. Desmond Bishop in the far side A gap, they would call it slicing through. Like a big cleaver and getting those arms around Lewis Rankin. Check out Bishop able to keep his feet after getting in the backfield. Sometimes guys can fly into the backfield, but they just flash in front of that running back's face and they're not able to keep their feet. But Bishop's good enough to keep his feet. Very athletic linebacker, but so stout inside, making a great play, and that's a big play for the Cal Deep. There's Douglas's punt. He turns this one over. Jackson's going to handle it at the 10-yard line, and he stopped immediately. Good job defensively on special teams by Chris Stevens to make the stop. And speaking of upsets, Washington is ahead of California, 17 to 16, and it's the third and 10 for the Bears. And a catch. They're going to give it to him? Yes. Great grab by Jordan. Very close to a one-hopper. you got to look out if you're Washington. You're hoping Cal makes some kind of mistake offensively because they are using both sides of the field and getting the ball to all their best players. This time, Jordan has to get real low and dive for the football, able to make the catch. And what a great play indeed, Barry, by Robert Jordan making that catch on the low throw by Longshore. He's only got a couple of catches, and both of them have been four first downs and extremely tough catches. First down at the 44. Longshore again, out of the gun. Has to throw quicker than he wanted to, and it's incomplete. Intended that time for the tight end, Began. Well, there's a guy who's hoping he's going to have another chance. Schneider three of four. One of the 50-yarder today. And Cal seems calm and collected in their offensive huddle. I don't want to say they don't have a sense of urgency, but they're losing. They're losing this football game at home, and there's a little over four minutes left in this football game. I mean, this would be a huge upset and a season killer for a team that's ranked in the BCS, and a lot of people think it's one of the best one-loss teams in the country. I think they are. But Washington's playing them hard. Oh, they are. Longshore again steps up, throws behind Hawkins, and now it's third down. So again, a crucial third down play. That's been a bread and butter play for the Bears on this day, but that time he threw it behind Hawkins. And right now, the Cal offense is kind of in their huddle and sort of looking at each other and wondering who's going to step up. Where's Deshaun Jackson right now? Where's Marshawn Lynch? They have to have their stars, just like Bishop stepped up on defense. They got to have their stars right now step up offensively. And for the Washington defense, I'm just so impressed with these guys. Bears only three of 12 in third down conversions. Looking at a third and long right now. Out of the gun once more, three-man rush. Longshore, double clutches, steps up, throws to Lynch. Lynch is gonna have the first down. Not by much, but he'll have the first down at the 45-yard line. He almost 
almost decided, I think I'll go backward and see if I can get forward a little more, and then wisely thought better of it. Yeah, if there's one thing I don't like about Marshawn Lynch's running style is a lot of the time he will stop his feet and kind of look for an alley. In this situation, his team needs a first down. I think he thought he had the first down already, but then he decides he's got to work for it a little bit. And check out the Exmo of him working for it. C.J. Wallace, the leading tackler on the Washington team, is not going to let Lynch go. But eventually, both hands fall off him, and a host of other Huskies are able to make the play. Cal gets the first down, but not by much. First down at the 45-yard line. Longshore again. Throws. Hawkins makes the catch. Tough, tough catch and throw that time into a lot of traffic. It's going to be perhaps a little bit short of the first down. Straight back goes long short. There's a screen this time for Lynch. Lynch has some blockers in front. 30, 25. Bounces off a man inside the 20 to the 18 yard line. Allah makes the stop. Eric Robertson, the left guard, making up a little bit for the error and the false start by getting in front of his running back, Marshawn Lynch, and leading the way. You just don't want to give these Cal offensive player space and you see Robinson Robertson working hard and pancaking his defender had him by the neck first down they mark it at the 20 yard line 245 remaining there's a give this time to Forsett Forsett will get about three Scott White on the tackle the Bears now the situation where they can use the clock a little bit. They are very much in Schneider's range as far as field goals are concerned, although I'm sure they would be much more satisfied to take it in for six. It's going to be second down and seven. Huskies have two timeouts remaining. Bears have all three of theirs. Cal's going to keep running the football, I bet, just to keep milking that clock. They don't want to give Carl Bonnell another chance with that football. They want to milk that clock and hopefully, like you said, get a touchdown, but they can settle for a field goal. Long short this time, give it to Lynch. Lynch tries to get it outside, does. He's the 10 to five, you're not gonna get him. Touchdown Bears! Well, the Bears found a little something-something when they really needed it. Marshawn Lynch so good at making that first defender miss. You see Gunheim has a shot at him, but Marshawn Lynch then faking the dive into the end zone and stopping. It was a little bit awkward. Jason Wells getting the push on him. Almost looked like he might have cramped up a little bit. <laughs> I think he was faking like he was going to dive into the end zone. I don't think he thought there was anybody around him, and then Wells pushing him toward the end zone. He's able to score. Now Cal's going for two. Why not? Would make it a seven point ball game. And they give it straight ahead to Forsett, and he's in. There's a play you don't see very much on a two point conversion attempt. But when you see it, it usually goes. They You're spread right. you out and run the draw. And now a seven point California lead. That may turn out to be a big play. Here is Lynch going in for the touchdown. Am I going to dive? No. I'll get pushed in. Bears by seven. Well, there's another look at Marshawn Lynch. He has done the job once again for the Bears today. Takes it into the end zone with a little stutter step. You know, I can't help but wonder if maybe Adrian Peterson wasn't in the back of his mind. Remember Peterson dove into the end zone, separated his shoulder, and was done for the year. He he, he broke his collarbone. That's right. And, That's you right. know, he was, he was hit, though. I mean, he got hit. He was about to dive, and Peterson got hit a little bit. Lynch, I'm not sure what he was thinking on his way into the end zone, but still a great play. And that's one of the few times you get to see Marshawn Lynch's face. We talked about it earlier. Doesn't like to take off his helmet. Always wears that visor. No visor today. And you see his face on the sideline. The great running back in the Pac-10, Marshawn Lynch. And, you know, before Jeff Tedford, was any Cal player ever being talked about in the Heisman or, or the BCS picture? I mean, he's just completely changed his place. No question about it. 20 carries, 128 yards and a touch today that last drive 12 plays 82 yards took almost five minutes Lynch finishes it off with a 17 yard run this is going to be Lewis at the two gets the 10 to 15 can't find the gap is dropped as he crosses the 20 yard line well Marshawn Lynch uh, on this day he had a couple of big runs which uh, he just always seems to have 
This one right here, breaks through, kicks to the outside, picked up 30 on that one. Then he catches a pass on a crucial third down. And then this play that took it down to the two yard line. And Lynch stepping outside, bouncing off people. First man hardly ever gets him. Bonnell to throw, drag pattern this time for the tight end. That's Lewis on the catch, and Lewis will pick up about five, maybe six yards. The clock is not yet a huge factor at a minute 23. They have two timeouts left. They get up over the ball. 119, 118. Bonnell straight back again, four man rush. Bonnell steps up, will run. Not having any of it is Zach Follett. He just, he just makes plays. He makes plays, and he plays great in space, and he can play inside. That time, he gets a guy in space. He makes good tackles. He's able to break down. And this is a very tall order right now for Carl Bunnell. He's a junior, but he's only started two games, and they're asking him to take them down the field and at least tie this football game with a touchdown. Tall order for a young quarterback starting his first game of the season. Right, let's go to the sideline right now. And Jim Watson, buddy. Gary, Carl Bonnell's got to be standing there thinking, what am I doing here right now? This is a guy who came out of high school, wanted an offer from UW, didn't get it. He went to Washington State and gray-shirted. He was playing for Bill Dova. He left there on a Friday. On Saturday, said, I'm going to be a Husky. New Heisel brought him to Montlake. Then Keith Gilbertson took over. Then Stanback became the starter. He was so buried on the depth chart, he considered quitting. Then Tyrone Willingham showed up and moved him up to number two. And then when Stanback went down, fate has tapped him on the shoulder one more time. And Petros, since we're in Berkeley, for Carl Bonnell, what a long and strange trip it has been. <laughs> Gonna see if he can truck him down the field right now. Third down, a big play here. Bonnell looking for it all. He's got Shackenford out there. He can't hang on. Great play that time by Brandon Hampton. Just got a fingertip on the ball and knocked it away, and that was going to be a completed pass. Well, if you thought the first half was boring, this second half has been chock full with excitement. Sonny Shackelford, really one of the hottest players in the Pac-10 up until last week versus Oregon State, who only had three receptions there, just flying down the football field right past Damian Hughes. And if it wasn't for Hampton with that fingertip, that's a touchdown. Did just enough. Fourth down play here, so this game riding on this play. Bonnell out of the gun. Steps up, throws, caught, close to a first down. I think he got it. Good job again, staying composed. Corey Williams with his first catch of the game and a first down. And now the Huskies got to get up over the ball. I'm not sure whether or not Carl Bonnell can get his team down the field and score, but I'll tell you what, this kid's got a future playing quarterback. I think so, too. He's been very poised. Four man rush this time. Bonnell's going to have to get out of there. Throws, comebacker, one hopper for Corey Williams. And the clock will stop at 48 seconds. That's okay in this situation. You said it because the clock stops. Incomplete passes in these situations are good. You got to get your first down, but an incomplete pass is not that bad for Carl Bonnell. It gives him a second to collect himself, relax, get the formation they want into the game, and run another play, try to get that ball downfield, preferably to Sonny Shackle for their best receiver. Second down and 10. That's not really the important factor, though. 48 seconds. A little bit more important than that. They have five receivers right now. The Bears show blitz. They come off the edge. Von Allen gets it off just as he was hit, and it's too long. Overthrows everybody. Von Allen had to unload that ball a little bit quicker than he would have liked to. Quentin Daniels was down there, but he had no chance. And now it's third down. Von Allen showing a strong arm here. And he's not afraid to let it rip. I mean, he has really thrown the ball downfield and done a great job. And the Bears have not yet dodged the ball. But now this time on third down throws. It is caught by Williams, and I don't know if that reach got him enough. I don't think it did. And now it's going to be fourth down and less than a yard. 37 seconds left. And this final drive has been just like this football game. The dogs just don't want to go away. They're going to keep fighting and keep scratching. There's been a lot of moments in this football game, four picks by the new starting quarterback, and they're still in the football game. There have been a lot of moments where they could have just given up and said, hey, you know, we tried, we played hard, we did well on defense, we played a physical. But they have not. They have kept fighting, and it just it just shows to the character of the Ty Willingham football team that these guys are still in this football game because they are they are out there. And there's the sneak, and by now we'll get the first down. Saw that coming. <laughs> Dick Quinlan was right on that. He had that one called. <laughs> no 
They'll get right up, have another play call. They still have a timeout to use. They are ready to snap the ball. 35 seconds. The clock starts again. Bonnell straight back. Three-man rush. Bonnell throws deep, looking for Daniels. And it is batted around and incomplete. Threw it into traffic. Good coverage by the Bears. Just hoping for a break. The crew and Thompson were there for California. And now there are 23 seconds. I think the Huskies would be better served to try to get something over the middle of the field or underneath just to get the ball downfield and then start taking their shots in the end zone. Right now, they're just letting Bunnell drop back and let it rip on every play. He's throwing it into double and triple coverage. Now it's second down and 10. Ball's at the 44-yard line. Straight back Bunnell. Now he's in trouble. Steps up. He's going to run. And he's going to get out of bounds short of the first down at the 46-yard line. He couldn't really take a chance to turn it upfield because if he stayed inbounds, they'd have a problem. Now 16 seconds left. He also had Zach Follett chasing him. And Zach Follett is the best player on this Cal defense other than Damian Hughes in space. He's a guy that just is a great open field tackler, and he had a real, real missile lock on Bonnell. 16 seconds left. It's third down and a long yard. And now they shift people all over the place. A little confusion here. Four receivers to the left side. Bonnell straight back. Throws for Daniel and too tall. Now it's fourth down with 11 seconds remaining. Corey Williams, the intended receiver. A little confusion, I think, on that play. And Ty Willingham is going to get awfully tired of these close but no cigar games. Well, and eventually, when you have these type of games, your team does learn to win. They learn to make plays and win in the football games. You saw the poise that Cal had on the final drive, marching down the field, maybe scoring a little too soon for Jeff Tedford's taste with the Marshawn Lynch touchdown. There's a give this time to Rankin. Rankin getting some room, now dragged out at the 40-yard line. They'll have to use her last time out. They'll have six seconds remaining. So basically, it's uh, one shot at the end zone and just hope. Well, this is the shot at the end zone. They're a little further back than they were at USC, but this is the shot at the end zone that the Huskies never got versus the Trojans. They've managed the clock better in this game, and they now have six seconds to go just to let her rip. they got to get the ball to Sonny Shackelford because he's 6'2", and he's got the best hands on the team. If they can find him in the end zone, he's got a shot, or at least can tip it up for another guy to come up under and maybe make a play and, and try to tie this football. So we'll see what uh, Ty Willingham has in his bag. There's not a lot of secrets about this. They'll put all the receivers into one zone and throw it up there. That wrapped around a game at Oregon. So here we go. And the Bears actually blitzed. Bonnell throws it. It is to the end zone, and it is caught! Touchdown! The impossible happens, Marlon Wood off the tip 40 yards and a score as the clock ticks down to nothing sometimes it happens and the people here at memorial stadium are just like us slack jawed and in awe i talked about the tip going up but marlon wood just sneaking under and you know he wasn't in the end zone he had to fight for that extra yard what great concentration by marlon wood not only to get that ball but they have the wherewithal to get it over the goal line. And now the try for point. Ooh. It is driven through, and we're going to overtime. <laughs> well, unbelievable. Three Bears are there, but so was Marlon Wood. Bishop was there. He tipped the ball. Peel was there. So was Marlon Wood, and Wood really heads up to get the ball in the end zone. Like you said, he caught it at about the two-yard line. And often you see sometimes a Hail Mary play, and this was definitely a Hail Mary play. Mickey Pimentel closing in on Bonnell, and Bonnell just throwing it up there. Three Cal players almost look like touch the ball, but you have to pick that ball off and pull it in because once that ball starts to creep, 
somebody can slip under and catch it, and that's exactly what Wood did. And once again, great concentration to get that ball over the goal line because so many times we see a guy catch that ball and he's down on the two-yard line and the game's over. This game, though, is not over. We are tied up and going to overtime, and those Cal captains do not want to come out to the 50-yard line. They thought they had this game wrapped up. Well, Washington's going to have it first. That is only the second career catch by Marlon Wood. And what a catch it was. They were able to come back. They managed the clock well. They got a little lucky. And this team will not give up. Going to overtime on the other side. Well, the two participants in that last play talking it over. How'd that happen? You want to see how it happened? Just like this. Carl Bonnell had to get it to the end zone. First of all, he did. The only problem was there were none of his guys there. Three Cal defenders all with a shot to pick this ball. It looked like Desmond Bishop had a beat on it, but there's Peel coming in and kind of knocks the ball loose and knocks Bishop out of the way. That allows Wood to creep in and make that catch. Damian Hughes gets there too late. A great job, can't say it enough, by Wood just to get that ball across the goal line after making the catch and a miraculous play by a Washington team that just wouldn't give up. Now, you can see Mickey Pimentel bearing down on Bunnell. You see the clock ticking down to zero. And this game is all but over. But once that ball goes up in the air, it's like it's floating on a cloud. Marlon Wood, who snatches it out of the sky and gives the Huskies another chance. And that was a shot at the end zone that they never got versus USC, courtesy. At the 25-yard line, single setback, two tight ends. Long short throws, catches made by Jordan, a gain of about three. Deshaun Goldson on the tackle for the Washington Huskies. Now some of the trouble with Cal here is they thought the game was wrapped up. These offensive guys are putting their tape back on on the sideline and really trying to recollect themselves to get back out there and try to win this football game. Now there's so much pressure in a football game that after you feel like it's over and you make that sigh of relief just to collect yourself again, it's very difficult. Now Marshawn Lynch incidentally has some tape on that calf. Lance Credence, the one I might have mentioned about perhaps a cramp. Here is Lynch. Lynch cuts back. That's the 20. He's the 15, the 10, and he's in. Touchdown, Bear. 22 yards. I think after this performance of this football game by Marshawn Lynch, just the way he's taken this team on his back the last two times their offense has had the football, you got to start talking about the Heisman again. This guy's playing on two bad ankles, and Barry looks like you said he's got a bad calf, finding holes in the offensive line, doing a great job, but just knowing when to cut up field and using his speed, taking it up there, Marshawn Lynch with a great opportunity for Cal to win this game, scoring a touchdown on the first possession of overtime. Now the try for point. Lynch, 21 carries, 150 yards. Schneider was perfect this year on extra points, drives this one through as well, and now it'll be Washington again in a familiar role of playing catch up. Robert Jordan gave Marshawn Lynch just a great block on that, but I think what made the play, if you see it again, he made a little faint inside. Yeah, and it's all the subtle things that Marshawn Lynch does that just makes him great. He makes that little step inside, and then even with the two bad ankles and the wrap on the calf, able to turn on that speed, I guarantee you he thought he touched the ball for the last time in this football game on the last touchdown he scored. They needed four sets to take it across with a two-point conversion, which they ended up needing to win the football game. And Marshawn Lynch, just an unbelievable performance there. Absolutely sensational. Now, Carl Bonnell will have to do the spectacular again. Here's this bunch formation. Four receivers to the left side. Bonnell, quarterback draw. Tries to bounce it to the outside. The Bears were having none of it. He picked up close to five yards. Last two carries from Marshawn Lynch, you know, are the difference in the game. 17 yards for a touchdown, and then the last one we just saw, 22 yards and the touchdown. And you can see him now. He knows this game isn't over yet. He hopes it is, but he's walking around on the sideline with a true sense of urgency. And you see that man with ice water in his veins, Ty Willingham on the sideline, leading this team to some amazing feats today. Second down and six. They have to have a touchdown, of course. Short drop. And the toss underneath is picked off the turf nicely by Williams. And Williams will have a first down at the seven-yard line. And again, I mean, I know we're being redundant by saying this, but there's just no dog in the dogs. There certainly isn't. And Corey Williams is a guy that hasn't shown up a lot this season, not really fulfilled the promise he's had in Washington. 
but here he shows up in overtime with a huge catch. Only seven receptions on the year cup game. He's out of Las Vegas. He's a senior. You know what they call him? Mr. Vegas. I like that. So, first down and goal at the six-yard line. And to give us to Rankin, trying to get outside, he's got no place to go. And once again, he stopped the speed, as you said. And if you can stop Rankin's feet, and this pretty much goes for all the big backs, if you can stop their feet in the backfield, they're going to have a hard time. Tiquan Thompson, the cornerback, doing a great job chasing him down. Just a freshman, but has great speed. He's filling in for Tim Mixon. And, you know, I worry about this Cal team if they had Tim Mixon. Just imagine the cornerback and punt returner that was hurt in camp with the ACL. They're playing with a backup corner, and they're still one of the better defenses in the country. Tiquan Thompson getting better with every game. Certainly is. The coaches. So now it's second down and goal from the 12-yard line. A loss of five on first down. Bonnell throws, intercepted, that's it. Ball game over. And he's going to run this out, but it's not going to matter. It's Desmond Bishop who is going to take this the distance, but it's all for naught. It doesn't make any difference. California has won the football game. Fifth interception of the day from Bonnell, and the Bears really had to dig down deeply and beat a dead game. Washington Husky team. Washington Huskies came in. You can't say enough about the way they played and the way they fought in this football game. One of the great Pac-10 games this year that we've seen. Washington coming out and playing hard. But Cal's star stepped up when they had to. The biggest star they've had in this game is their middle linebacker, Desmond Bishop. Ball thrown right between the one and the zero. Fifth pick of the game for Bonnell, starting his first game in 2006. And Bishop running out of gas, but trying to take it back to the end zone. What a great play by the middle linebacker. And Cal knows that they had a great victory because you see the great celebration they're having right now. What a great game. Jim to the sideline, Jim Watson. Waddy. Yeah, down here with Nate Longshore, the quarterback. What a terrific football game. Yeah, great game. Uh, you know, we struggled a little bit on offense in the first half, but uh, my hat's off to the defense for uh, keeping us in it and, and uh, you know, sealing the victory at the end. Yeah, what happened with you guys in the second half because you were a totally different football team? You know, we just had to relax. We were a little uptight the first half, uh, you know, thinking too much. We need to just uh, relax, have fun, and just go out and play. Appreciate the time. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Nate Longshore will bring in... Uh, Jeff Tedford is here in just a second. We'll get to him in a second, Barry. All right, I'll keep it here for a minute. We'll get back to you with Jeff Tedford for Lynch. 21 carries, 150 yards. Nate Longshore, as you saw earlier, 291 yards passing. I apologize that we're not going to be able to get that interview with Jeff Tedford because we got to take you right now. It's a doubleheader day. Remember to our Kiyosara Game Day studio and Mike Goldberg. Guys, great game here.